In a previous video, I showed you these Tesla Model 3 2170 or 21700 cells and performed internal resistance and discharge capacity tests. If you have not seen that video, there will be a link placed at the end of this video that you can click on. In case you're wondering, these are genuine Tesla Model 3 cells. The company, Big Battery, purchased a Tesla Model 3 battery module, then carefully extracted all the cells, tested each one, recapped the ends, added new insulators, and wrapped each cell like you see right here. And they did that so people can use these cells for other purposes. Just so you know the type of company they are, once they heard about the virus outbreak, they loaned out 19 solar trailers to hospitals in their area and imported 1 million masks, which was extremely nice of them to do. It's companies like that that you should be supporting, so be sure to visit the link to their website that I provided in the video description area. I also included a money-saving discount code. Now because I had so many of these cells laying around, I wanted to make an extremely compact, powerful, and multi-purpose power supply using as few cells as possible. So let me show you what I made. Now right inside this pouch, you can see how small it is, in the palm of my hand, is a unit that I designed and you can see right over here we have a high efficiency boost converter or step up converter it does have a digital display when you turn it on it's not only going to tell you the output voltage at this XT60 connector but you can push the button and see the input voltage which is the voltage of the two 2170 or 21700 cells now the holder is nothing more than a plastic holder designed for 21700 cells. These cells are charged in my rapid charger, so all I have to do is remove them from this holder to charge them. And that's very simple to do. You can see the Velcro straps. Just lift up on these straps. And you have full access to those batteries. Pop them out, put them in my charger, and then I can pop them back into this unit. So let me just put this right here and strap it back down. Now if you look at the ends, you can see each one of these ends is coated to prevent any short circuiting. It's E6000, it's a non-conductive sealant, and I did it to both sides of the holder. This holder was bonded to this board using 3M double stick tape. Each one of these straps is also bonded to the holder. So when you remove the strap to take the battery out, you do not have to worry about the strap sliding out of position. Now what I did over here, I wanted to have a quick connect. I didn't want to have these screw terminals. I took an XT60 connector and using a Dremel with a cutoff wheel, I modified the pins that were sticking out of this connector. They happen to be spaced perfectly for the two openings in this connector. You simply unscrew this, slide the connector in, tighten it down on those terminals, and once that was secured, I applied E6000 adhesive, and this stuff is extremely strong. I've been using it for years. It dries like a very stiff rubber band, and it will not separate. If you tried to bend this down, it would spring right back. By having this connector the way it is, I don't have to use a Phillips screwdriver to change between different cables. Now on this end over here, you can see there is a fuse. This is a 10 amp fuse. And the purpose of that, the cells that are in here, the Tesla Model 3 cells, are not protected. There's no protection circuit in them. So I want to make sure I do not overload the batteries in case of a short circuit. That's why everything is coated and you have the fuse. This step-up converter has a maximum output of 6 amps. In order to turn this on, it's very simple. You look at the bottom and right here is a stiff, clear piece of plastic. When you pull that out, it's now activated. It's going to be very hard to see this display, so let me try turning it on and see if you can see it. Yes, yeah, it's very tough to see that display. It's 12.6. I don't know if you can see that. But if I push this button right here, you can see, hopefully, it says 8.3 volts. So the 8.3 volts is the voltage of the two cells in series, and over here, the 12.6 volts is the output at the XT60 connector. Now I wanted to be able to adjust the output voltage for anything I desire from the voltage of these two cells, which is right around 8 volts, all the way up to 36. So what I did is I took the potentiometer that had a screw on it, 
and I glued on this brass nut. It fit perfectly over that brass screw and when it was glued on, it does not move. So if I want to adjust the voltage, all I would have to do is just rotate whichever direction I want it to go. You can see it going lower. 9.9, 9.8, 9.3. And you could take it all the way down to just a hair below, there it is, 8.1 because the batteries have a voltage in series of 8.3. So 0.2 less than the battery voltage, and this will go all the way up to 36. So I'm going to leave this, let me set it for 12, it's 11.2. Apologize for the display, it's tough. I even tried red tape, and with the red tape over it, it hides it so much it's barely visible. So 12.3, 12.7. So right there we have 12, 12 12.7 volts. So if I wanted to use this to power something using 12 volts, all I would have to do is choose the correct cable. So let me just open these up right here. Velcro strap. This one right here, the XT60, has a 12 volt socket. Let me move these other ones first. So we have the 12 volt socket. Simply plug this in, and now I can use that 12.7 volt output to use it for whatever load I desire, up to 6 amps. So let me show you using this half a million candle power spotlight, it's 12 volts. The lamp is halogen, and it's a 50 watt lamp. Plug that in. You can see when I turn it on. The voltage does drop down a little bit. It's going to be hard for you to see. It drops down, it's right now at 11.9. It will stabilize, and if I want, I can raise it back up to the 12.7 level by simply rotating this potentiometer. Believe it or not, with this almost five amp load connected, this light will run for at least 30 to 35 minutes straight. Now if I didn't want to use this, simply just pop that out. If I wanted to charge up a smartphone, I could do that multiple times using this portable power unit. All that's required is this cable. This is going to make sure the voltage is set at 5 volts, and it's also going to take care of the data pin voltage. If the data pin voltage is not right, many phones will not charge properly. So as long as this is set to anything above 8 volts, it's going to step it down using that little tiny board right over here. And you can pick those up at the link shown in the video description area. So let me plug this in and we're going to take a reading. Let me spin it around this way. Just to show you the power output for the USB using the mini power supply. That's one amp. It's not turned on yet. Zero watts. Five volts is the power coming off the mini power supply. And let's turn it on. Now it's got a 1 amp load, 4.9 watts, 4.9 volts. And it should work fine all the way up to 2.1 amps. So let me turn it all the way up just to make sure. And as you can see the fan just came on, 10 watts. 4.8, 4.9 volts, so that works perfectly. Now let me show you another great use for this mini power supply. I have many different electronic gadgets that use 9 volt batteries. So using this cable right here and adjusting the voltage with the potentiometer, I can easily supply power to 9 volt devices. Also on this cable is a male adapter plug. If you're going to be changing the battery on your vehicle, you want to make sure that power is applied before disconnecting the battery. So what you would do is you put the ignition key to the on position. You would set this at 12.6 volts, or it could be 12 volts, that's fine. Then you would plug this into the accessory socket, and then you would remove the battery from the vehicle. The good thing about this, that even when you open and close the doors, if the interior lights go on, it's still going to be able to supply enough power, and it will not cut off. Let me plug this cable in and I'll show you the 9 volt output.
So we're going to set this right here to 9 volts. And hopefully you can see that it's 12.6. I left the light off to make it a little easier. And a brand new 9 volt battery is usually 9.5 to 9.6. All right, so 9.6 volts. And I'm going to take my digital multimeter and just verify that it's 9.6 right here. And you can see 9.68. All right, 14.5. 14.5. An extremely useful gadget that can fit inside your pocket or inside a backpack. You'll always have power if you need it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.